Close the quest. Uh, we'll be able to see the dinosaur today. <clears throat> Time to go. Everyone is already waiting inside. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's join them! Please, wait a moment. What's the matter? Before attending the meeting, I hope you can promise me one thing. Come on, we are well behaved. What do you need? Promise me that you won't commit to anything too reckless. We always do. Hmm, what do you think? Sure, I'll try not to. Okay. Gasha is the cup of flame rises. What's the cup of flame? They're all waiting for you. Jerry, you go too? No. Okay, well. Last person. That was like that. The quest started just by getting close. We already discussed things a bit. Mm. Hey, where have you been? I've missed you two. Are you ready? We can start now. Very well. After some discussion and debates, the group finally works on the detail. Are you sure this is what? gonna work? I gotta admit, it's bold. Color me impressed. Hmm. <sighs> it's worth a try. Shouldn't I know? The point of discussion is to arrive at a solution. Let's cut the small talk and move to the next point. Mm. Uh, you're making Paimon nervous. Well. You're finally done. I have some other stuff to take care of. Catch you all later. Sure, should be there. Come on, don't give me that face. I know what you're going to say. I'll be careful. That's what I wanted to hear. Take care. Well, traveler, Paimon, judging from your expressions, the meeting must have been quite productive. You can tell? I'm not that good at scheming a strategy, but I can sense people's emotions. And based on your reaction, things must have gone quite well. We'll make her move on the next... Inagarba day. I think they said that word already. Inagarba. Uh, Paimon's a little worried. Hopefully nothing will go wrong. To be honest, I feel the same. But you're already some of the most capable people I know. So you have my trust. <laughs> Candace gave us a compliment! Your deeds speak for themselves. Candace, we stayed behind to tell you that, although you won't be coming with us, we'll be sure to remember your words. I'm very glad to hear that. I've said the same thing to everyone here today as I said to you when you arrived. Your safety is the most important thing. Only when you're safe can the plan be successful. So please, take care. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you for taking my advice. 
Good luck. With everything. I'll be here in the village praying for you. Stay safe, everyone. I'll be here praying for you. Um, where? Hey, there's another quest here. No, I want to be with this guy. I don't know what a quest may start. Ah, I can continue her quest. Ah, the guys are there still. Ah, there seems to be a new quest over there as well. So maybe there's continuation of the golden slumber. Hmm, sounds good. I'll go make some preparations. Okay. I'll hit them! Have you finished saying your goodbyes? Yeah! Also, Candace told everyone to be careful! She said she told that to them individually. Yes, she did. But I think my point also bears repeating. Our plan is not child's play. We won't be able to achieve anything if we're simply careful. We must go beyond that and fully commit ourselves to it. I hope this is clear to you. I understand and accept. Huh? Shouldn't you be saying something more cheerful to boost our morale right now? Didn't we already do that during the meeting? You can never have enough words of encouragement. In that case, Candace can cuddle you to your heart's content while I continue to remind you of the seriousness of our situation. We all have our jobs to do, after all. It's like how some people can be put in charge of logistics while others will fight on the front lines. Makes sense. Hmm. Speaking of the front lines, you don't look anything like a soldier. You don't look anything like a researcher. Well, of course. Compared to the mercenaries, I'm merely a feeble scholar. But the advantage of not being a mercenary is that I get to stay in a safer place and offer my strategic hey. insight. Thanks. Just think about that mercenary who lost his mind. Mercenary groups are facing constant danger every single day. Well, being a scholar is also a high-risk occupation, and you are a scholar! Hey, what's up? I'm not like the rest of them. Even among members of the same species, some will exhibit far more potential than others. This guy. <laughs> Paimon still remembers when those mercenaries in Port Ormos called you a lunatic. Oh, uh, I just... Hey, I'm good. I didn't notice I... Uh, I didn't save the changes. It's saying I still got... I'm still doing Golden Slumber, not the main quest. <laughs> All intellectuals are lunatics in the eyes of fools. I'll take that as a compliment. Hmm. That reminds me. Do you remember the record we saw in the King Deshret ruins? It mentioned forbidden knowledge. Mm, sorry, I don't remember anymore. Wait. Seriously? <laughs> remember? We went into the desert not long ago to exchange hostages with the Aramites. Once we arrived, the ground collapsed due to an earthquake, and we fell into some ruins. Yeah, I remember what happened. I don't Still remember nothing. what was written. Come on. Come on. It was a remnant of King Deshret's bygone civilization, and we found some messages left by a priest of the king, and learned about the existence of forbidden knowledge. Ah, oh, no problem. Just... Just practice. I'm not a native speaker as well. I may sometimes say something a bit wrong as well. Us. Forbidden knowledge has the power to drive people insane, but this fact has never been shared with the public. Even I, who has worked in the academia for some time, was never once informed of this. I think those mad scholars and mercenaries we encountered may have all fallen victim to the corrupting qualities of forbidden knowledge. But the academia has always held a different view. They have always believed that symptoms of madness are a side effect of human contact with divine knowledge as mere mortals. Come to think of it, 
Perhaps the academia has also never understood the true nature of forbidden knowledge, and thus always approached the issue from the wrong direction. The Withering, Elazar, and the Sandstorms. Don't you think what is happening right now across Sumeru is rather similar to the forbidden knowledge pollution that occurred in the desert thousands of years ago? Ah, uh, the same sounds true. It's definitely possible. But Paimon thought that Ermin Soul's disease is what caused the withering in the sandstorms. At least, that's what Tainari told us. Yeah, he should be here. Wait this. a second. Could it be that... Ah, you've connected the dots. The cause of Soul's illness may precisely be the pollution from forbidden knowledge. Uh, but if that's the case, what should we do? This is huge! We must tell Nahid about this as soon as possible. Wait. Why do you think Lesser Lord Kusanali would have a solution to this situation? She said the key to saving Urbansoul is... Don't tell anything the remaining conscious consciousness of their Lord Ruka Devata. I don't remember that. There's still some consciousness of Ruka Devata. It's related to the scene you saw when you passed out in the Avidia Forest? Mm. That whole the world forget me thing? Mm. Hmm. In that case, it's imperative that we rescue Lesser Lord Kusanali. Only by working with her to save Erminsoul can we completely resolve the problem Sumeru currently faces. Shouldn't have discussed this with everybody. To make sure meeting. we're still on track, I would like to check on the state of some of our preparatory work. Where are we going? To an Aramite base. Okay, where? It's the one with me already, isn't it? Yeah, they're children. <laughs> Time to go! Oh, you mm. made it. Huh? What are they doing here? I gave them some... Technical work to do. Ah, oh, it's the scribe. And is that the traveler I see? How's the work going? Ah, yes. We have fixed the devices according to your instructions. One of them is already ready for use, while the others are still under repair. Hmm. Aren't those devices for can knowledge extraction? What are you doing with those? Look here. What's that look on your face? Are you scared? Paimon's a little scared, but very, very furious! Hmm. <laughs> That's an interesting response. Anyway, we're not going to use this just yet. As I mentioned during the meeting, this knowledge capsule contains a decree I drew up in the past. The Academia should also have their own copy. And according to the plan we just came up with... Traveler. I want you to record something into this capsule. Me? Do you believe we can save Lesser Lord Kusanali? Yes, I do. But mostly because that's the way this game usually progresses. Uh, what I may lack in faith, I'll make up with my actions. No, I do. Good. Conviction is the most important part of all of this. Now, please get ready and put on this device. Record our conviction into the knowledge capsule? Yes. Mm. Uh, Paimon is still really worried. I understand. But trust me, Paimon, this is something we have to do. It's best if you can do as I say. Because, to achieve this impossible task, it sounds like you'll need to fool your own heart first. Although it may feel like a mm. trick, Self-encouragement may be the most important tool we have. Hmm. Paimon can see the point you're trying to make. I'm ready. Imagine this. 
We have orchestrated our plan and successfully rescued Lesser Lord Kusanali. As a result, we have changed Sumeru's entire political landscape. Everything went without a hitch, and everyone recognizes and praises our achievements. I can see that. We've done that. Now, open your eyes. Here. What's this? Read it out loud. By Silver. Some certain words have been written on the notes. Although I don't quite understand the purpose of this recording, you still come it's on. It's done. There's never enough time. What? What a fascinating experience. Is your head okay? Does anything hurt? I'm fine. It's just a recording. There should be no negative effects. But what was the point of doing this? Uh, Paimon doesn't get it. And that's perfectly fine. In any case, these capsules aren't meant to be used by you. Huh? What do you mean? Have you forgotten? Our plan needs to account for those who have long relied on the Akasha. Mm. You may find it hard to believe, but for those people, everything the Akasha transmits to them is nothing short of absolute truth. Oh, okay. So... Well, it's kind of fake news that we are spreading, but... We're gonna make them happen. Afterwards. Imagine if you've been using a device like the Akasha since the day you were born. And this device has always supported you during times of need. After all that time, what do you think you'd become? Uh... A fool? A machine? A slave to orders. And that's why rules are so important. In addition, those who understand the rules can delineate boundaries and identify gray areas. Hmm. But why would you need to identify the gray areas? You could say that those kinds of ambiguous zones can be very... interesting. One might even say they're advantageous in the right hands. Things you're interested in are really out there. Are all Sumeru scholars like this? Anyway... That's enough chit-chat. I'm going to take those two to work on some small projects. You can head to Caravan Rebot and start preparing for the next step. Small projects? We're going to tinker with the Akasha Terminal and make a few... modifications. Clear weather all around brightens the heart. I thought we agreed on a plan. How can you go back on your word? The plan is too radical and carries a high risk for casualties. I've given it a lot of thought. And in the end, I still can't agree to it. But it's still the best plan we have. Is a former Matra, you of all people should be able to see the bigger picture and recognize the innate advantages of our plan. I did. And that's how I saw the danger behind these so-called advantages. <sighs> Ahitham's plan is even more radical than I imagined. Huh? Why are you guys arguing? My friend, you're just in time. Why don't you help me persuade Sino? He's turned against our plan. We agreed to work out a plan at the meeting. As mercenaries, you're familiar with the local environment, so you'll take care of the specifics. But then, you went to All Haytham for suggestions. Had I known All Haytham would give you those kinds of suggestions, I would not have agreed to the plan. Look, you already know that we're all on the same side here, don't you? Mercenaries place a lot of importance on their bonds of friendship, but also will not hesitate to make sacrifices if they deem the situation to be sufficiently dire. <sighs> I'm sorry, but as things stand, I can't accept your principles. Some more context to the nice. 
Seems you really do understand the ways of the desert. Traveler, Paimon. This is also something you should know. Rahman's plan is to have me work with the Caravan Reebok guards in my capacity as a Matra. We will arrest the mercenaries and escort them into Sumeru City. Seems good so far. Wait! How can we work with the guards? We can't get through that wall easily, remember? Caravan Rebot would never let so many unregistered members of the Aramites enter Sumeru City. My plan will clear us of any possible suspicion, and also let us enter the city as a big group. There is no better way. That also sounds like something all Haytham told you. Am I right? Doesn't all Haytham know how dangerous this plan is? Of course he does. He told me. There is no perfect plan, but this can get the job done. He also said that with the help of Sino and the Traveler, our chance of success would increase significantly. Mm -hmm. I never blindly trust anyone, and I've always had a good eye for people. I think he made a number of valid points. It's my own choice to trust you. If I make the arrests alone, I can control myself and prevent you from getting hurt. But I can't guarantee that kind of discipline from the guards. To make the whole thing more convincing, you'll need to resist to some degree. Casualties are inevitable once push comes to shove. I'm okay with the deaths of enemies. But now that we're allies, I'm against the meaningless loss of our own. We can knock a whole squad of mercenaries easily. They could be dragon <laughs> cautious by the other guards. I can't believe a mantra would actually care about us. I've lived a hard life, and I can say that people like you are hard to come by. I've always treated my allies with honesty and respect. They have the right to know important things like this. Now you're making this hard for me. Hey, is there something we can do to help? There's no other way. I can't help. I know. I know. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I knew you would say that. Hmm. We can help fight some of the mercenaries, which should reduce the number of times you'll have to struggle directly with the guards. That should help at least a little bit. We should respect the termination of our man, his comrade. Sino, on behalf of my people, I thank you for your kindness. But this is a mission we cannot turn our backs on. We strongly value the lives of our friends, but the goal we are about to achieve is even more important. We have no fear of casualties, because we crave the spoils of victory. So please, lend us your support. We will show you the determination of us desert dwellers. Well, now that you've put it that way, I can no longer refuse. That was easy. But remember, you need to follow the plan and not do anything reckless. Candace made it very clear that we can only achieve our goals if we can ensure our safety. Since you and I both recognize the significance of this operation, there should be no more animosity between the followers of the Dendrowarkon and those of King Deshret. Everyone's life is equally important. Okay, you have a deal. Let's do this for our shared dream. The guards should be stationed in the courtyard nearby. You can find them there. Guards! General Mahamatra! To... to what do we owe the honor? Keep your voice down. This is a secret operation. I'm going to arrest a large criminal gang near this location. According to the Academia's Guide and Regulations on Secret Operations, I have the right to ask for the cooperation of Caravan Rebot. 
Ah, of course, of course. Mahamatra Sino's order is the Academia's order. Just let us know what you need. But who exactly are you planning to arrest, and how many people are you expecting? Depending on the scale of this operation, we may need to report it to our superiors. They're a squad of Aramites whose number is comparable to Ein El Akmar in Port Ormos. They're involved in the theft and resale of supplies from the Academia. As many as Ein El Akmar? This should definitely be classified as a joint operation. Then I suggest that you report this to your superiors as soon as possible, and treat it as a top priority desert operation. I will need personnel. Got it! Please wait a moment, I'll contact them immediately. Uh, you look so commanding when you're looking. Because this is work. You're much more friendly to us. Because I trust you. Paimon can't believe you're still in the mood to chat. This whole thing has Paimon scared stiff! Aren't you even a little worried? What if these guards already know that you have betrayed the Academia and are no longer their General Mahamatra? Even if that guard doesn't know, their superiors might, right? No, there is a common knowledge that he... People don't just know he, he left the we Academia. We discussed this, remember? You know. The Caravan Rebot operation is of great importance. But don't worry, the guards there shouldn't know that Sino has stepped down. How can you be so sure? First, the other Matra still don't know why Sino has left, which proves that the Academia has been covering up the matter. Second, this is a crucial moment for the Academia's God creation plan. If something were to happen to the General Mahamatra, it's bound to attract a lot of unwanted attention. No matter how you look at it, they don't seem interested in sharing the news of Sino's departure. A reasonable inference. I agree. Which brings us to our next issue. I'm sure some of you have been wondering if the prediction function of the Akasha will affect our operation. The Akasha is still in operation, so I must remain on high alert. Actually, considering the power of the Akasha, it's quite strange that it hasn't already tried to interfere with my actions. I've given that a lot of thought. For now, I don't think you'll need to worry. If you remember, when you first came to Aru Village, all your actions and routes were predicted by the Akasha. It even gave that information to those who kidnapped the village keepers. But things like that never happened again after we met up with the Traveler. Oh. Hmm. I meant jamming device. That's true. But what? Look at it from a different angle. Why do you think the Akasha will predict your actions? Because my personal data has been entered into the Akasha. That's true. But the key to this question is, how well can the Akasha make predictions about a person? Haven't you ever thought about it? Just how can it do this in the first place? Because the Akasha controls the entirety of Sumeru. The Academia firmly believes that all human actions can be explained through logic. By sorting and analyzing entered data, the Akasha can derive behavioral logic and predict the actions of those who fit an existing logic model. However, at the risk of sounding like an advocate for fallacies, can everyone truly be considered logical at all times? Emotions are part of our behavioral logic, but can you guarantee that every experience of the same joy or pain would be equally intense? How can our feelings and opinions be predictable down to the letter in every single instance? Hmm. Sino, in the past, you've always worked alone. In the absence of another person who could sway you or your thoughts, the Akasha could produce predictions that were similar to your real-life behavioral principles. Decisive and principled, you were used to solving problems alone. That's why the Akasha could figure you out. But now, you've joined a team. And I believe the Akasha hasn't yet figured out the full composition of it. 
Our thoughts and logic have intermingled and weaved themselves together to become a complicated, chaotic mess. Any one of us could potentially disagree with another. The Akasha lacks data on these interactions, and it's impossible for it to predict your actions in the future based on your decisions in the past. After all, there's probably a limit to just how much we can be modeled or controlled by data. So, in my opinion, you're probably safe for now. Huh, makes sense to me. I agree. The Akasha is not alive, and I don't think we can be completely controlled by something without a mind of its own. Huh, <sighs> is that so? I guess there are things that even the Akasha cannot calculate, and people will not be forever trapped by the past. Paimon's so glad that this is settled. Next time, pay attention during our meetings. <sighs> Will do. I'm confident that we can do this. Just remember to stay vigilant. <gasps> Footsteps! General Mahamatra, we were not expecting your presence here. I'm the security officer of the Grand Deshret Desert District. My name is Luxembarbo. Hmm. This is my assistant, the Traveler. He will be working with me. The construct next to him is for his work. <laughs> beep! Construct! Beep! What a great honor to meet you. Your golden hair is as bright as the sun. And, uh, is this the latest technology from the Academia? Nice to meet you, too. Have you made a decision regarding the matter I mentioned to your subordinate? It seems to be a dire situation, so of course you will have our full cooperation. To be perfectly honest, I've always longed to go on a mission with someone as well known as yourself. There's no need for flattery. <clears throat> yes, sir. Take your most elite platoon and follow me to the eastern side of the district. We will carry out the operation there. Understood. <sighs> map. Do we need? Hurry, bring the map! Very major moves on the map, science shows the location. In two days, okay. we will engage Rahman's air mites and capture all of them. Any questions about the time or location? None at all, sir. Good. See you then. Yes, sir. Maybe hanging around the General Mahamatra isn't so bad after all. Everyone's so respectful towards us. And this feel pretty good. This is all due to the absolute authority of the Academia. And now, we're going to strike back against that massive pillar of power. Yeah. Get ready. We will move out in two days. I'll have to wait. Wait at the point in time. Come on. Around. It's time for the operation! Let's go meet Sino in the desert! Well, we're back in our village. Well, this place is still burning hot, just like I was first. I wonder how janitors are doing. Come on, you're starting another quest! This should be doing well. Uh, that's what I was thinking. Show images back like here. Less condition should have helped their composure, or should we say that they're growing up? I'm not sure we can call what turns out they're growing up. But Jed said that he was like a tank for throwing kids. Turns out a range. Couldn't be. Oh, come on, I didn't. 
Sort of interrupt your conversation and commentary, a student in the academia. I seek traces of the past that remain on the earth. Were you part of Tirzahim, this recent expedition to the desert? How did you know? Come on, we're talking about it. It really is you. He mentioned both of you in the acknowledgments of his paper. It's already published. Paper? Oh yeah, he did say he would focus on writing his paper once he got back, so it's done already. Yep, he locked himself in his room once he got back from the desert. The other researchers were worried that he was depressed from failing to obtain any results from his expedition. After a few days, we started betting on whether he would eat or drink first when he finally came outside. When suddenly charged out submitted a paper to the academia. The Golden Slumber, a study on governance in the later period of all Mars, it's Ahmar then that they were seeing all Ahmar civilization and stages of survival. It may sound a little rude, but I never expected Tirza to be capable of writing such a groundbreaking paper. Groundbreaking? That sounds very impressive. It's like a Muslim dish. And that's an indoor solid researcher for you. Indorsology researcher. Yep, Tirza did call himself an Indorsology researcher when we first met. Indorsology? I didn't see any mention of that in the paper. I guess I'll have to ask him when I get back. Anyway, how did he, how do you think us in the groundbreaking paper of his? I don't think it was at the end of the paper, so I can still remember it very clearly. I like to dedicate this last paragraph to a traveler and his companion. They are like the corollas that blossom in the nursery, the bread and salt during a long trip, as well as a gift to me from the desert. Without them, I, in no other way, could complete this paper. Wow, there's a real flatterness there. A gift from the desert, huh? Eh? Almost blushing. Uh, he did pay us though. Uh, no, he deserved the praise. Anyone who helps a researcher during the paper writing process is worthy of acknowledgement and gratitude. In the world of researchers, there is nothing more painful than writing a paper. If there is, I'll be getting stuck writing a paper. It will be good. Uh, Tirzana was worrying about his paper when we first met. He probably suffered quite a bit before then. To tell the truth, lately I've been trapped in that state of suffering as well. I decided to enter the desert, thinking that perhaps I could make some new discoveries based on Tirzat's thesis. I didn't expect to meet the very person fe featured in his acknowledgments. Uh, it must be fate that brought us together, so... Uh, can you help me like you helped him? Let me think about it. Oh, are you perhaps exhausted and in need of some rest after your last adventure? Or did there's a lack of common sense leave you with bitter taste? No, I'm just busy right now. It's alright, I understand your pains. After all, it isn't easy for adventurers who travel the world to deal with researchers. But I'm different. I'm from a family of merchants in Port Ormus. I'm nothing like those researchers who don't even know how to communicate with people. Uh, allow me to give you a warm welcome. How does treating you to a meal sound? Of course, you'll be welcome seated for the trouble. Whatever he paid, uh, uh, let's discuss that later. Hmm, getting paid and treated to a meal sure sounds like a good deal. Let's have me out if you insist. Okay, later. Some other day. Oh, not to send you friends, okay. Some other time. And busy. Time to go! Yeah, there shouldn't be quest to start so close to teleport. And it wasn't even a good teleport because I had to go over on Time to go. Huh? Oh damn. I you could have. Let's hurry over! 
Wait a moment. Hmm. Ah! Oh, it's you. You're my assistant, remember? Yes, I remember. I just arrived earlier. Being my assistant, you must stay with me. Now let's head over there. It's General Mahamatra and his assistants. We meet again. Huh. You're here early. It's to show how important we think the operation is. Since this is a big case for the Academia, we are prepared to give it our best. I'm glad to hear your sense of resolve. Remember, we must capture them alive. They are our only leads for the case. If they die, we will be unable to continue the investigation. Understood. Everyone! The Aramites are approaching from the west! Make preparations and be ready for combat! Halt! Oh? What a warm welcome! What do you want? Judging from those shiny weapons in your hands, it seems like you're not interested in a deal. Ramon, the Academia has caught wind of your smuggling and illicit sales. If you value your life, I advise you to surrender. Who are you supposed to be? A Matra from the Academia? <laughs> I can't believe you came all this way just to catch us. I'm not here to talk. Oh, nobody's given me this much time of day since I became a mercenary. Brothers, for that slight, let's wash our blades with their blood. Let's show them we Aramites are not to be messed with. Wind Strider. <laughs> With all my strength. Stabilized. As one with wind and cloud. Order guide you. Can't see. Wind strider. This dance is for you. It's over. Ah! We have subdued them. The operation is now over. All Aramite mercenaries and related personnel in the area have been arrested. Ah, you pitiful Dendro Archon dogs! You'll regret this! <laughs> I'm afraid you'll regret it first. King Jeshred will curse you, and you will all! Silence! Oh. Uh. oh! As I said, we can knock them off. <sighs> Restrain them and take them back to Caravan Rebot. Count their numbers and send them to the Academia as instructed by the General Mahamatra. Yes, sir! First guard, first with Roman and the other's way. Mahamatra Sino, I will now take my leave. If you need further assistance, please come to Caravan Rebot and ask for me. Understood. You are dismissed. There they go. Let's talk elsewhere. Defensive place for your potential people's traps for your conversation. This part of the plan went really well. Yes, things went perfectly. That's fantastic! And that punch you gave Ram on there? Sure looked convincing enough. Once we're done here, I'll return to Caravan Rebot and oversee the group's transport. I promise. I'll get everyone into Sumeru City safely. Thank you. Yeah, you're the reason why everything went so well. <sighs> it's not the time to celebrate yet. Hmm. I believe Dia should already be waiting for you. Go join up with her. She will need you to introduce her to Tainari. Hmm, he's pretty chill. Speaking of which, is it really okay for herself. us not to share the full plan with Tainari? What if he'll feel miffed about it and refuse to work with us? 
I'm a little worried about that too. I have a very close relationship with Tainari. Given how well we know each other, I believe my message alone should be enough to bring him to our side. He knows I won't make jokes about things like this. If we need help, Tainari is the best option. Get ready for the next phase of the plan. Don't keep them waiting. Alright, it's here. I thought it would be closer to the forest. It's about time. Didn't you say our part of the plan is the most important of all? Yes. And here you come rolling in late. Okay. In the time it took you to get here, I already did five laps around the place, down seven drinks, and even did some clothes shopping. Uh, sorry. We didn't mean to keep you waiting. <laughs> I just wanted to fix your attitude and rub it in a little. After all, you took your sweet time getting here, and we've got important stuff to take care of. Sorry, this situation was a bit tricky. <laughs> I just like seeing that serious look on your face. All right, I'll stop. All joking aside, I'm glad you're here. Let's get moving and take care of this as soon as possible. Uh, but where should we start? Our responsibility is to get a status update on the Fatui Harbinger known as the Doctor. We need to make sure he won't get in our way when we rescue Lesser Lord Kusanali. Dealing with an institution that controls all of Sumeru is already hard enough. If the doctor were to crash the party, it would be next to impossible for us to achieve our goals. Yeah, we sure don't want him chewing up. Ooh, he really gets by on the creeps. Right? Hearing his name just reminds me of those stuffy old geezers in the academia. I'd rather not have to deal with someone like that. So what should we do? According to the plan, we should first go to Pardis D.I. and ask for Forest Watcher Tainari. If all hate them and Sino's sources are solid, then we can be sure that Tainari still has the Academia's trust. So, we'll find Tainari and convince him to get us the latest intel on the Doctor. Then, depending on what we learn, we'll make any necessary adjustments to our plan. The Sages have placed spies everywhere on the other side of the wall. I'll follow you as a bodyguard. I didn't expect you to become my bodyguard. <laughs> you should be honored. I don't offer my services to just anyone you know. But Paimon thought mercenaries would do anything for Mora. That's certainly true. But when multiple employers are vying for your services, you should always go with the best offer. Hmm, let's see. If I were to charge you a bill, I guess I can apply a discount. Want. I was not sure we can afford it. Hmm, how much do I want? Hey, how about paying me with a smile? What do you say? Mm? I haven't seen you smiling much recently. If you ask me, someone like you must look lovely when they smile. Come on, give me a smile so that I can be less worried. Thanks. <laughs> Looking good. I hope this pretty smile will become our lucky charm. There are many kinds of smiles, but only a truly joyous one can bring blessings to others. Let's consider this smile a down payment for our future victory. Let's go. It's time to pay a visit to Party's DI. Okay. Ah, Traveler Paimon! And you are? Long time to see. That's not her name. Hey there. This is our friend Dia. She's an Aramite mercenary. A mercenary? Hmm, you must have some big news for me. I know I want to ask you about something. It's something really important. Please help us out. 
All right, then follow me. This place is better. We won't be disturbed by any passerby. Okay, what is this important thing you want to ask me? Have you ever met the doctor? How would you know where he is? The doctor, huh? He's that strange-looking Fatui Harbinger with the mask! Paimon thinks he has blue hair! Yes, I know him. Don't they all have masks? Uh, actually, he left Party's DI just a little while ago. Does it... Wasn't the doctor that did experiments with Kali? Sure, he know. <sighs> he left already? Yeah, he came looking for me. Can I ask what it was about? Sorry to ask you like this after having just met, but your answer is very important to us. For now, all we can share with you is that your friend Sino is working with us. Sino, you say? Hmm. I see. So that's why he hasn't been at the Academia. Okay. I will answer your questions and will assist you any way I can. You don't have to tell me everything that's happened. <laughs> Sino's name really does work wonders. You're not even a little worried that we might have made it all up? Despite having just met you, I can sense that you're the serious type. Between you, the Traveler, and Sino, none of you strike me as the type that would conspire to deceive me. You don't need to tell me anything you don't want to. I'll also get straight to the point. The Harbinger you mentioned came to me because he wanted to take the scholar Hypasia away with him. Uh, she's still here. Hypasia? Why would he want her? Did she got better? What is he after? And what do you mean by take away? Is he planning to leave Sumeru? Yes. He oh. told me his return to Snezhnaya is imminent. Oh. <sighs> so you mean... You're leaving this place soon? Indeed. Otherwise, we could have perhaps talked a little more. I was just about to set out when I remembered something important. To that end, I made a final trip to Pardis Di. Let me ask, have you been taking care of a scholar by the name of Hapasia? Your sources are accurate. No doubt because you recruited many informants. But you're right. Hapasia has indeed been receiving treatment from me. Forgive me for asking, but how's the treatment coming along? Given the way you're asking, I assume you have something to say. Since you asked, I'll be frank. I would like to take Hapasia to Snezhnaya. <sighs> it's incredibly difficult to transfer a patient. As a scholar yourself, shouldn't you at least be aware of this? Oh? I can't believe your utter lack of faith in me, to the point of even questioning my general level of knowledge. How unbefitting. Well, you're the only one who's ever made such a request. I have my ways of keeping her safe during the journey. In addition, I can also promise that under my care, Hapasia will receive the most advanced and effective treatment. I will personally supervise her treatment and see to her recovery. Would that be agreeable to you? Hapasia was born in Sumeru and remains a scholar of the Academia. Her situation has not become dire enough to necessitate her transfer to another nation. Transporting her to Snezhnaya is risky, and the potential benefits are unknown. As the person currently responsible for her treatment, I cannot possibly sign off on this transfer. Your suggestion is rude and reckless. I'll pass. I don't know much about the doctor, but after talking with him, I realized that, just like many other scholars, he possesses an aura of arrogance that I've come to detest. It's not so much that he's looking down on others, but more that he's so confident in himself and his abilities, to a point of near insanity. 
I would never refer a patient to someone like him. Do you think you would just give up on her? I prepared myself for a protracted battle of wits and was really surprised to see him just give up on the topic. Still, his reaction really concerned me. It wasn't such a smooth transition. <laughs> I see, I see. Of course, your opinion makes perfect sense. <laughs> You're still young, but already quite stubborn. I must say, you are not like what I had expected. <sighs> Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't just let you off the hook like this. But unfortunately, I'm in a hurry today. What with Her Most Noble Majesty, the Tsaritsa, calling for our return. Luckily, there is still some time left for me to take care of everything before I leave. It's just as the Academia said. You're a responsible and gifted scholar. Sadly, even with all of that, you're still lacking a bit of shrewdness. And that's also why people like you can never realize that sooner or later, everyone must pay the price for what they've learned. can't help but feel like he's hinting at something unpleasant. He asked a question, yet didn't care for my answer. Perhaps I'm nothing but a talking rock in his eyes. He never came off as malicious, but an utter lack of compassion permeated throughout our conversation. From his tone, I can sense that he's always looked down on others. <sighs> I can't believe he's actually living scenario. I can barely believe it myself. But if that's true, the situation will be in our favor. I don't think I missed any details. Frankly speaking, I don't want you to do anything too risky. Now that you know a little more, it should be easier for you to stay safe. Thank you for sharing the information with us. Sorry, we can't tell you everything. We appreciate that you helped us anyway. I won't forget your kindness. Why can't we tell him both? It's okay. Yours. I have an obligation to do so. To be perfectly honest, all of this may have started because of me. What? Recently, my master wrote several letters to me, asking me to return to the academia and assist him with his research. Hasn't he already asked you several times before? Yes, but there's something off about this most recent batch of letters. The handwriting and tone are both familiar, but some details have been omitted. My master will occasionally leave a few dots on the back of the letter. One dot means that he wrote the letter on a sunny day, and three dots stand for a rainy day. That's odd. This has been a habit of his for many years but I didn't find any dots in his recent letters. I believe... something may have happened to him. <sighs> I get it. Since you are always at Gondarvaville, you would like me, someone already working at the Academia, to investigate this matter, right? I'd like to ask you to do that for me. If you can keep yourself safe, please withdraw immediately at the first hint of danger. I can do that, but I have a feeling it won't be that simple. The Academia has been working on a big project. I'm not quite sure what it is, but your master might be involved with it. Hmm. If the higher-ups really are hiding something, then it will be difficult to remove myself from the situation once the investigation starts. If the situation becomes critical, I'll leave the Academia. If you don't see me there for an extended period, that's your cue. All right. We've got a plan. I'll stay at Gundarvaville to support you. If that scenario comes to pass, you must be extra vigilant. 
and be wary of any messages or direct requests from the Academia. I must say, I didn't expect a warning like this from the General Mahamatra. Being loyal to the Academia doesn't mean blindly doing whatever the Sages say. I know what I'm doing. On that note, aren't you also being quite distrustful of your alma mater? The Academia, yes, but my master is a man of integrity. Even when I was a student, I was worried he'd get in trouble for sticking to his beliefs. I suppose he's lucky to have lasted so long. But in the end, still caught up to him. I see. So you noticed something was up with the Academia from the very beginning. The use. This may well be how Sino became involved in all this. In that case, I must keep my promise and help you however I can. Also, if you run into Sino again, please help me pass on a message to him. Trust your own senses and experiences. I'm sure he does that. I think this may be something he needs to hear right now. Okay, we'll find a chance to tell him. Thanks. Right. Now let's go hunt down this harbinger. Isn't he leaving? Isn't that what we want? Oh, it's... by the way, which way did the doctor go when he left Pardis D.I.? That way. Gotcha. Thanks so much. We'll be on our way. See you later. He could come with us. The more the merrier. According to Tainari, the doctor is leaving Sumeru soon. I want to check if the doctor was actually telling the truth. He also said that he'll take care of everything before he leaves. What did he mean by that? We need to be extra careful when dealing with a person like him. Just to be safe, let's chase him and see what we find. But we have no idea where he went! How can we start chasing him? We'll do it the mercenary way. I'll find leads as we go. All you have to do is just follow me. <laughs> that Harbinger may have tried to cover his trail, but he still left some traces. Or perhaps he never even thought about concealing his whereabouts. Maybe that's just how arrogant he really is. Yep, we're headed in the right direction. Hmm, the traces are still fresh, but there's no sign of his entourage. Clearly, they're in a hurry. Well, there was recently hmm, a fire just as I thought. some days ago. Time to go! We can stop here. I think I know where the doctor went. To the south of here is Port Ormos, which seems to be where they're headed. Port Ormos? They're going to leave by boat? That's right. Let's go to the port and have a look for ourselves. Yeah, they don't have cars. I imagine you would be better to go by boat. If they're to go back to... Yeah. Naya. Um... is crawling with Fatui soldiers. Let's keep going and see what we can find. Now this is a proper farewell ceremony for a Snezhnaian Harbinger. The Lord Harbinger is leaving. <sighs> I've still only seen him once or twice. I used to hold a position in our homeland, and back then, the doctor spoke in a very different way from the way he speaks now. 
Maybe the way people talk in Sumeru has rubbed off on him? It's always like that when you spend too long away from home. When he gets back to Snezhnaya, perhaps it will also take him some time to get used to the life there again. Huh? But, sir, that... that can't be right. No, no, I remember it like it was yesterday. Both his expressions and tones are now very different. Also, for some reason, he seems like he's... all smiles now. You must be mistaken. Nobody's supposed to look happy when they're on a business trip. The doctor is on that boat. We could just have looked around. We didn't have so I told guys. the truth after all. He is actually leaving Sumeru. Let's get closer and find a place to hide so we can observe him. Oh. I know a better place to observe him. So tired. Pause. Okay, rest. Yeah, this is a great place. Oh. We could just grab the side of the boat. And go she's now. We don't get tired by just standing on a rock wall or something. This place will do. We can hide here while we keep an eye on the boat. Mm, so the doctor didn't lie about him tomorrow. Uh, could it really be that simple? Are you sure he's not planning something? Huh? Uh oh. What's the matter? He knows us. He, he saw us. Oh, wave back, smile and wave. Huh? It, is he? Waving at us? It's time to say goodbye. Wait, is he the only person on the boat? Huh? You mean there's nobody with him? There was somebody. Where are all the soldiers we saw on the port just now? What? They were all here just a few minutes ago, but now they vanished. And they vanished. So this was a trap. But there's nobody around us. Wait, don't tell me that. Are you entering a game? Luckily, there is still some time left for me to take care of everything before I leave. Oh no. What? They might what be after that? Hapasia. Let's get back to Party's DI. Huh? What do you mean? I just remember a hey, patient one connected her consciousness to the Baladir. Oh yeah. I'm afraid that she's seen something that she wasn't supposed to see. If I were the Fatui, I would also try to take her away. And if I couldn't. Oh no! Are you saying they're going to kill her? Let's go! Oh, oh. So, um, then I can fight. Pardis Di is not a place you Fatui can just show up and do as you please. I believe we've already made ourselves quite clear. Our superior gave us permission to search for and collect medicinal herbs in Pardis Di for research purposes. But you've been in Sumeru for some time already. I find it coincidental that you chose to only come here today. 
Even the Grand Sage himself may not have the right to question our research, much less an ordinary scholar like yourself. Grand Sage he may not have. Isn't he the highest authority? Here I've done my moment? duty to inform you. Don't make things difficult for yourself. It would seem that my words have fallen on deaf ears. You can keep trying to deny it, but coming to Party's DI now? I'm pretty sure you're not just looking for herbs. With all due respect, your baseless speculations will only lead to unnecessary trouble. Well, you only have your Harbinger to blame. He knows nothing about keeping a low profile. I may be staying at Party's DI as a scholar, but that doesn't mean I'm no longer a forest watcher. It is still my duty to protect the peace and safety of the scholars who have contributed so much to Sumeru. Then it seems our conversation has hit an impasse. No one will lay a hand on you, Hapasia. Not on my watch! Okay. Tainomi, hey, are you alright? I'm fine. These Fatui have really crossed the line. Time to teach them a lesson. There's no use resisting! Give us Hapasia! Keep dreaming! Order guide you. Gather. Wind strike. Tip. Tip. One with the forest. Detoxifying heat. Huh. You need a hurry up. Yeah. Roast and fry. Tip. The doctor's orders are absolute. Yeah? You've been someone's lapdog for so long that you don't know anything else now. Solidify! This is order! As one with wind and cloud! We're not getting anywhere! Traveler, Paimon, please go to Hypasia. We need to make sure they don't try to sneak around and attack from behind. Okay. Got it! Oh, we were going somewhere. Hypasia's still here. Doesn't look like anyone's broken in. He's Kart Kartaka. Was that his name? Here? Ship is a harm, but why is she so still? She's just sleeping. Well, how is she? Everything's fine. She's some sleep. Oh, that's good. Oh, is that Kartaka? Was that his name? So, you think this is over? What? The voice? The blood deer? What? The ballad deer is here? Can we talk telepathically now? <laughs> I've missed that look of abject horror. You've given me that look every time we meet. can see him, so we see a spirit, a ghost, wait. Is it because I made physical contact with a patient? Is the blood doing her consciousness? Oh. I can hear all of your thoughts, you know. Oh. Don't you remember? I already saw you the first time you came to Party's DI and made contact with Hypasia. Hey, he's not quite so shaded. What did you do to me, I didn't need to do anything. It is her honor to be able to connect her consciousness with me. Uh, who are you talking to? It can't be the Balladeer, right? <laughs> That's impossible. I know you must be curious. I might as well tell you that I decided to enter Hapasia's consciousness the moment I sensed your touch. Why? I wanted to observe you on a fool's errand. Hey, traveler! What are you doing? Please, <laughs> pal, stay My quiet. deification is nearly complete. All that's left now are just some final details. Do you understand? 
Even if you manage to rescue Lesser Lord Kusanali, it will be impossible for you to defeat a bona fide god like me. I defeated others. Is it wise to force that childlike god into a divine battle against me? Academia acted even faster than I thought. Scholars consider the god of wisdom to be the sum total of their faith. It's how they can justify reverence for a god as they construct it. But this also shows that humanity's worship of gods is a combination of blasphemy and exaltation. It's truly laughable. You can hear my thoughts. I want you to ask a question. <laughs> so I don't have to speak. Yes. What is it? Well, you're actually more friendly than usual. Or am I mistaken? You see. I mean, we just barely saw him twice. Yeah, I'm in a good mood. Which is why I'm talking to you like this. But are you really okay with all this? What do you mean? Yeah, what do I mean? The Academia plans to infuse your consciousness with Divine Knowledge Capsules. This is extremely risky. You think the Academia's theories are correct, and you manage to gain the wisdom of a god. You would probably no longer remain yourself. You would become the new Greater Lord Ruka Devata for the Academia. Even if it means losing yourself, would you still want to become a god? <laughs> Those words almost make you sound like a friend who actually cares. Well, you will be part of my party eventually. But you're wrong. I'm different from all of you. I was born to become a god. My entire life up until this point has just been a meaningless routine. Just think about a sheet of paper. By itself, it holds no meaning. The content recorded on it is what gives it value. All I had recorded down before were some painful memories and boring human feelings. Such senseless drivel should have been erased a long time ago. Indeed, to me, the sight of you fools in your futile struggles is far more amusing. Tell me, just what has this world done for you to protect it with such zest and conviction? You want to understand? I'm connected to your consciousness, so I can hear what you're thinking and sense the depth of your determination. This is a good conversation we're having. So here's a word of advice. Let go of your misguided guardian complex. You know nothing about the truth. It'll be for your own good, as well as everyone else's. Humans are a species that can only find bliss in ignorance. That's truly what you believe. Why did you keep your connection with Big Beja? Surely with the power you've come to possess, you can cut her off with just a thought. Ah, you've seen my affection for her. If you were in my position, I think you'd feel the same way. She peered into my consciousness and saw my past. Someone like that is qualified to become my first follower. Mm. All gods need followers. So Hapasia has been chosen. Her appearance heralds my imminent arrival at the throne of divinity, while her worship shall become my glory. That's so? You're doubting me again? <laughs> no matter. Soon, you'll know what kind of authority <laughs> you're challenging. Uh, isn't that an art fighting out there? By himself. If you truly cherish your follower, you should protect her from harm. Who wants to hurt my devout follower? <laughs> Seems that the doctor does not wish for her to stay summarily and continue receiving treatment here. Isn't that a little suspicious? The doctor wants to hurt my first follower? Doesn't that make you mad? <laughs> How very amusing. Has anyone ever told you that you're not good at sowing discord? 
the doctor has never known his place. Even now, the puny human thinks himself capable of interfering in the business of the new god. You're still too naive if you think a few words will be enough to convince me to destroy the doctor. But I'm willing to give you a gift, just like my expression of affection towards Hapasia. It is an honor for you to be able to stand here and speak with me. As my listener, you will be rewarded. What a merciful God. The look on her face, what are you planning? Both good things and bad things can be called gifts. Oh. After all, gods have never needed to be reasonable. Could be the blood deer. They can't change the wire. The person Paimon right. couldn't see was the Belladeer? Oh, he sure chatted with you for a while. I didn't expect that either. He's become milder, but somehow even more deranged. Uh, hmm. Where is the storm headed? It can be. It's the blood deer using the noses to change the wire. That means anyone outside is in danger. Let's go. Tiny. Hmm. It is here. Oh, but it it's all that. Nice. Follow the wind. Uh it looks like oh, she got have hit the by a lion. retreated? <laughs> yeah. Oh, ten are in the air over there. Hey, what happened to you? He's hurt. I'm fine. Hey, happens sometimes. Don't move. I've seen Aramites get struck by lightning before. You need to rest. Struck by lightning? Come on. This happens all the time. We game. were fighting, and just as things started looking grim, the weather suddenly became extremely strange. Lightning started attacking everyone, almost as if it were alive. Luckily, there were only two of us. And both of us were nimble enough to dodge most of the strikes. There were a lot of Fatui, though. And they were being torn to shreds by the bolts of lightning. With that, all the Fatui soldiers were forced to retreat. Oh. It's all right. My wound aside, you look like you've seen something unpleasant. Is Hapasia all right? She's okay for now, but I want to tell you something. Oh, the thunder is kind of loud for him. Hey, didn't I tell you not to move? Sure, we drag him inside outside of the light the storm. Just in case. Let's go to Hypatia's place and talk about things there. She's fine. Hey, how about taking care of yourself first? I understand my condition. Ugh. Ugh. The wound is not fatal. I'll be all right. Ugh. The more you understand medicine, the worse of a patient you become. I know. They always think they can push through the pain. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, he sat down. Let me rest for a bit. <sighs> Sorry, traveler. Now you may start. He recovers him from meeting the doctor at Port Arms to encounter with the balladeer. So that's what you were talking to the balladeer about? Oh, Paimon can't believe what he's thinking. <sighs> the Academia's God creation plan. <sighs> How ridiculous. 
That sounds, uh, ambitious, I guess? Anyway, this is all way beyond me. As long as I can enjoy every day with a drink in my hand, tasty food in my stomach, and a good night's rest, that's enough. I'll only work when I have to. <laughs> I must be the least ambitious person who's ever set foot in Party's DI. Don't say that. I haven't even thanked you for your help back there. Don't mention it. Well, if nothing else, all this proves that the doctor really did have some urgent matter to attend to, and left Sumeru in a hurry. Yeah, and I also have Yuri. I do. I think about Yuri is the reason why the doctor is trying to pay patient. Her consciousness connected to the bullet Yuri. Is she has seen his past? Hmm, maybe the Fatui want to cover up some secret of the Balladeer. Is that why they tried to seize Hapasia? You said the Balladeer claimed that Hapasia has seen his past. So, what could be there? For now, I'm still not really sure. Have you noticed? The Balladeer is not happy with the Doctor's actions. He thinks the Doctor has no right to consider himself as his equal. So, if the Doctor was to show up again, would the Balladeer zap him with lightning? Based on what the Traveler has said, I think he would. Having the Doctor gone benefits him as well as us. In other words, we've successfully completed the stage of the plan. The Doctor is out of the picture now. Yay! That's a big accomplishment! So if he wasn't leaving, our job would be to fight the Doctor. <sighs> I'm also happy for you. Thank you for the help, Tainari. Make sure you rest up for now. Yes, please do get some yeah, rice. Yeah. All right. Okay, that wraps things up for us here at Party's DI. Traveler, it's about time we rendezvous with the others at the Grand Bazaar. Let's continue to keep a low profile. You can head there once you're ready. Hey, yeah, I didn't actually have completed your quest. You can just focus on your plan. Leave a patient to me. <laughs> My wound isn't going to get in the way. <sighs> okay, guess I'll sit still for a little while longer. Okay, wait, what's my projection now? Uh. Mm, that's the bazaar, so it's down there. Time to go. <laughs> All right, everyone is here. How did everything go? Any luck with your missions? Let's report back one by one. I'll start first. We've made the necessary modifications to the Akasha terminal. In addition, the props required are also ready. I'll go next. The Traveler and I went to Party's DI. The situation was a bit complicated. But we found Tainari. Unfortunately, he was wounded during a fight. Who is behind it? Uh, well, that's the tough part. What should I say, Traveler? The Fatui or the Balladeer? Let's go with the Balladeer. <sighs> After some back and forth, we confirm that the Doctor has left Sumeru by boat. He has something urgent to attend to back in Snezhnaya. So, we've successfully removed the doctor from the picture. Also, Tainari's already resting, so he'll be okay. Hmm. Good. Oh! Tainari also asked us to tell you this message. Trust your own senses and experiences. Hmm. 
All right. I'll remember that. Everything also went smoothly on my side. The Aramites should have arrived at their destination by now. To avoid alerting the quarry, they will stay there for now. I can't believe you actually got so many Aramites into Sumeru City. It's all thanks to Ramon and his brave team, as well as their bold strategy. It appears to have been very effective. I'm glad to hear it. Well, is that everything? Okay, this meeting is adjourned. Huh? Wait, you mean that's it? Well, what else is there to discuss? Shouldn't you end with some words of encouragement? You know, to fire us up now? Uh -huh. Personally, I'd rather we all go home and get some rest. I'll hate them, you... Ugh. Oh, and if you wanted someone to say something to that effect, then I must reiterate that I'm here to strategize and not to lead. So you should find someone more suitable to do that. But I thought all of you Academia Big Shots were great speakers. Then I should remind you that I'm the scribe. I know that. So what? A scribe is responsible for recording meetings, not speaking. Fine, whatever. Well, Sino doesn't seem to be much of a talker either. I guess that leaves it to my employer. Employer? Yep. The Traveler hired me. Cast me for a smile. Is her thing. <laughs> That's right. So come on, boss. What do you have to say for the team? Yeah! Say something to boost morale! Let me think. Huh? What are you all doing here? Yeah, she could help as well. Oh, it's Nero! Hey, everyone. I'm not disturbing you, am I? Not at all. I was actually just about to go find you. <laughs> uh, judging from the group and all your serious faces, you were discussing something important, weren't you? But you also look like you're up to no good. <laughs> Seems pretty interesting. <laughs> Welcome, Nilu. Would you like to join us? Huh? You know, Scar? Huh? Join you? You mean, you also want to discuss something important with me? Yes. Something very important. Nilu, are there any breaks in your performance schedule in the upcoming days? Huh? Wait, you're seriously inviting me? I don't have the whole plan on your day. Nilu shops first, but he's long before. I. I can't believe my ears! You are truly the bravest and most passionate people of Sumeru, well, that I've ever met. Ahem. <coughs> oh, yeah, right. We're not from Sumeru. The Traveler and Paimon are not from Sumeru, but you are awesome as well. <laughs> That's right! I... I must admit that I'm a little scared. But I'll try my best for Lesser Lord Kusanali. If I can somehow use my abilities to help you, then count me in. Remember, believe in yourself. Okay, I'll get my friends at the Grand Bazaar to help us tomorrow. Just remember not to say too much. Be discreet. Yep, you got it. All the preparations are done. Now, can we finally conclude this meeting? Yeah, tomorrow... We're going to see the gods. So, have you thought up what you'd like to say, boss? Oh, it's hard to believe everything that has happened to now, and our actions will bring change to many things tomorrow. Yep, yep! It's Watch a us. grand plan, and we're all super awesome! That's right, so. Just get a good night's sleep, and we'll <laughs> Just that. Well said. A good night's rest before an operation can be the difference between success and failure. <sighs> Thankfully, I've had my place to myself recently. It's been nice and quiet. Uh-huh. 
Oh, um, nothing. Hey okay, guys, a little late. All right, let's all go home and get a good night's sleep so we can be up early tomorrow. Okay, so I guess that means it's time to say good night now. Yep, good night, everyone. Scenery. Today is the Academia's near Garbaha Day. We can finally put our plan into action. Oh, hey, them should be waiting for us. Let's go to the Academia and find him. Hello, you two. Sleep well? Naturally, I slept just fine. After all, a good rest should be considered part of the plan, since energy is an important resource. You, you just want to show off how calm you are! It's crucial to dissipate any tension before we execute our plan. The only thing you're doing is being annoying! Anyway, do you need me to go over the game plan again? Mm. Yeah, Our target is Grand Sage Azar's office. Everyone in the Academia knows that's where the Grand Sage's console is. Only they can operate it. Many restricted commands and operations are executed via that console. I'm sure that console has a way to free Lesser Lord Kusanali. Hmm, you could probably just break in her room and break the orb that's holding her. You know, Hyman's been thinking. What kind of technology could let the sages imprison even a god? That isn't something they could have accomplished with their scholarly talents alone. In the Sanctuary of Surasthana, there's a device of Greater Lord Rukadevata's that she once used to isolate herself while meditating. Mm. Five hundred years ago, the Grand Sage at the time modified the device so that it could no longer be controlled from the inside. They were effectively trapping one god with the power of another. Don't forget, today is Nyagarbaha Day, arguably the most important day to the Academia. The Sages and Core Academia personnel are busy loading the latest batch of research developments and legal decrees into knowledge capsules so that they can be entered into the Akasha. All the Darshan's researchers have their noses to the grindstone, and the Academia's grounds are flowing with all sorts of people. It's the perfect time for an infiltration. When the Grand Sage leaves his office to supervise the entering process, that's our cue to access the console and free the Dendro Archon. And for things like that way, the place is a bit more refined. Why? It's well, like yes. That's just the visible side of our plan, after all. If precedence holds, the Academia should have already started preparing for Nyagarbaha Day. Everyone should be in position. All that's left is for us to lead the charge. Let's go. Uh, so are we just gonna walk in through the front door, or...? Yes. Were you expecting a stealthier approach? Uh, Paimon can't think of a good comeback. All right, it's all on I'll hate them if things go south. Scribe? Please, wait. Are you Scribe Alhatham? <laughs> That's me. Is something the matter? I'm in a hurry. Uh, no. I was just surprised to see you here. I had heard that the sages were looking for you not long ago, but I didn't know what for. And, um, 
Also, please don't bring outside guests into the academia. This is sound good. Outside guests? How did you arrive at such a conclusion? Your groundless inference shames the Haravatat Darshan. What? What did you say? I'm the top student in Haravatat, and I earned third place at the last Inter-Darshan debate. Don't look down on me! That wasn't my intention. As your Haravatat senior, I just assumed that you possessed a greater aptitude for critical thinking. Look, based on what you already know, the purpose of my return and the reason they're here should be obvious. Is that so? Wait a moment. Let me think. Don't tell me the answer. The sages search for you. A blonde-haired traveler. Outside guests. So, from the start, the sages weren't looking for you, but this traveler? And you were gone from the academia for so long because... Hey, shh. Yes, you've proven yourself as the top student in Haravatat. I surmise you've arrived at the correct conclusion. As I expected. Please forgive me. I wasn't thinking clearly just now. Thank you for getting me back on track. It's nothing. We'll be on our way then. All right. Thank you for your contributions to the academia, scribe. Uh, what the heck just happened now? What did he just guess? I'm afraid I don't know either. Aren't you supposed to find us? You have no idea? Wasn't that your quest? Mm-hmm. He convinced himself of whatever truth he came up with. That is the so-called pride of a scholar. If someone questions their academic facility, they will instantly feign understanding to keep up appearances. Nowadays, the academia is rampant with this type of scholar. Their obvious farces of intellect only serve to highlight themselves as fools. Wow. So there are special ways to deal with smart people. We don't even need to make up our own excuses. We shouldn't waste any more time. It would be problematic if we missed our window of opportunity. Let's go. Is this the Academia's library? We've been here. Indeed. Known as the House of Dana, it is quite possibly the most extensive special collections library in Tavat. Uh, there are a lot of students going through here. Is it really okay just to waltz right in? The Academia marches to a fast beat, especially since it's Nagarbaha Day. They're all occupied with their own matters. Just act natural. Now. Hurry along. Scatter! What's this platform for? It's a lift that academia personnel use to access higher floors. Are we gonna take it then? The Grand Sage's office is up there somewhere. No, not right now. We can't guarantee that we won't run into the Great Sage. Let's step back and observe for now. You think the Grand Sage will exit from there? And after he does, we'd sneak past him? Oh, Paimon thinks that's really dangerous. Who knows? However, if we can confirm Azar's current location, our operation will be much safer if we... Allow me to offer you a hint. If you wish to know his location, look behind you. Can we knock him down? Can we run? Ah! You... you are... What's Grand Sage Azar doing here? 
Hmm. Do not tell me you believed the Academia would not grow suspicious of you after such a prolonged absence, scribe. An eyewitness had informed me of your whereabouts, so I came to personally welcome you. Great Sage, I didn't expect you to care so much about me. I'm truly flattered. I'm sure. But compared to you, I am far more interested in these two unexpected guests. You are the Traveler and Paimon, correct? It's a pity that only now have I been afforded the opportunity to formally meet two of Sumeru's most esteemed guests. I do apologize for my lack of decorum. It's actually late for you to stop. Let's stop. Excellent. You immediately initiated discussion instead of attempting to prepare some perfunctory excuse. You clearly understand the situation at hand, and have no intention of making a reckless stand. The foot traffic here renders this place unsuitable for discussion. Please, follow me to my office. Right. That's where we're heading anyway. This place is crawling with guards. There's no way out for us. I can meet them. All right then, Traveler. What did you wish to discuss with me? Today is Neagarbaha Day, so I still have many responsibilities to attend to. There is little time for idle chit-chat before I detain you all. But do we are not to be trusted? If do we have ulterior motives? Hmm. You seem to know quite a bit about our endeavors. If that is so, then you should be praising our great work, rather than using your trivial misgivings in a futile attempt to sway me. Trivial? Then tell me, what do the Fatui want from me? A vanity or some kind of analysis? <laughs> Worthless. Those are all completely worthless. Benefits, divine power. These materialistic words do nothing but debase our great work. Creating a god. Yes, we are using human wisdom to create a god. If humanity cannot attain omniscience and omnipotence, then we shall create a god to reveal them. This is the pinnacle of human wisdom. Okay, we shall regain a god's guidance at long last. No longer will we flounder in the interminable void of consciousness and knowledge. Even Ermin's soul will be freed from its plight. For our nation of scholars, this is the ultimate aspiration. No cost is too great to realize it. He it said it's the pinnacle of human wisdom, but he needs to rely on a god. You will never understand the rapture of having a god be born within your very hands. With your degree of knowledge, you cannot even comprehend such an emotion. What about this for Lord Kusanali? It's not like Samara didn't already have a god of its own. Gods exist on a plane that far eclipses humanities. Lesser Lord Kusanali. What can she even do? Care for the people, fend off sandstorms, fabricate silly fairy tales. <laughs> These are but child's play for the academia. Does that make us equal to the gods? We are a people favored by greater Lord Rukadevata. Though I may have personally not seen it, our forefathers bore witness to true wisdom. The ascension of the Lesser Lord has brought nothing but bewilderment to the scholars. They all ask, is that truly what true wisdom is supposed to look like? With that in mind, it is better to keep her isolated in the sanctuary of Suristhana, so our academy will not become embroiled in turmoil. Justification. Do you really think that only the super smart or powerful should be able to call themselves gods? There are guys with scholars. Don't know what I can say or do. As per your judgment, Grand Sage, they are indeed dangerous individuals. 
Not only are they acting against the academia, but their ideologies have the potential to lead scholars astray. Looks like there really was merit in my assignment. Alhatham? Are you talking about us? Anyway, I've brought them to the academia as ordered, but it took some time and trouble. Oh, that reminds me. Here is the investigation report you had requested. It's a summary of my time spent with the Traveler, an array of information about him ready for your perusal. I'll hate them! So you're... You're still on the Academia's side! We finally started to trust you! We've been set up? No, we haven't. Hmm. Excellent. Detailed contents with no errors. I would expect nothing less than an immaculate report from the scribe. As it is near Garbaha Day, I'll enter the information on you into the Akasha. Surely you know what that means. We'll be monitored, just like Sino. With the Akasha's calculation prowess, all of your actions will be predicted with an accuracy of at least 98%. Furthermore, your data will be updated in real time whenever new information presents itself. To put it into words you can understand, wherever you go, you will be walking under an invisible leash. This is Sumeru's greatest penalty for dishonest persons. When you say dishonest, does that also include... General Are you not familiar with the concept that great responsibility begets an equally great suspicion? No, it's usually power and responsibility. So In any it. case, you are Sumeru's most concerning external variable. Locking you down will greatly decrease the chance of any undesirable outcomes coming to pass. You're despicable! <laughs> despicable? Hmm. Perhaps from your perspective, but I suppose you had mentally prepared yourselves for this, no? Don't you mean? Your ploy was to sacrifice the traveler here, was it not? Uh. Lord Azar, I know what you're trying to say, but I've been following your plan this entire time. Why are you doubting me at this juncture? Huh. <laughs> Must I delineate your entire plan? Very well, I will spell things out. First off, I received an eyewitness report that you were spotted with the Traveler at Caravan Rebot. However, you immediately departed for the desert and escaped surveillance range. Judging by the time, you all likely encountered the truant General Mahamatra in the desert. Am I correct? shouldn't have mentioned Sino just now. The Academia had not received correspondence from its scribe for a prolonged time. You were also in the company of the Traveler, a close associate of Lesser Lord Kusanali and General Mahamatra Sino, who had defected from the Academia. With their instigation, what was the probability that you would betray the Academia? Rationally speaking, 50%? 70%? What do you think? Regardless, that's only a guess. The facts are that I've brought the Traveler right before you, and I gave you my report. Indeed, your boldness deserves praise. To think that despite status as an outlander, the Traveler is still willing to sacrifice for the sake of your plan. If I'm correct, you have a contingency plan to save Lesser Lord Kusanali and ruin our great work. Sneak into the Academia on Nia Garbaha Day using Alhatham's status as the scribe, for there is a good chance that an opportunity to save the Lesser Lord will arise. Should your intentions be discovered, Alhatham will turn traitor and sacrifice the Traveler, thus proving his innocence. He can then stay inside the Academia and continue searching for a way to proceed forward. As for Sino, according to the Akasha's calculations, he will soon return to the Academia and confront me in person. 
I suppose this is also a part of your plan? <laughs> You'll see me as a traitor regardless of what I say, no? Even if you impugn me, it would have little effect on you all. You misunderstand. Losing our scribe would irreparably damage the Academia's regular operations and the development of Sumeru's future academic systems. However, under the current circumstances, even that is trivial compared to what we stand to gain from our great work. You said that I betrayed the Academia, but you, Azar, you've betrayed all of Sumeru, betrayed its Archon. So flight is turned to fight at long last. Guards! Yeah, I should have been beating them since we have to fight anyway. We could just be beating them from the beginning. Oh. Well, what do we have here? So you stole that divine knowledge capsule. Traitor. You traitor! <laughs> Even the most rational scholar will yearn for the power of a god in a moment of desperation. Aren't you doing the exact same thing as me, Althatham? Unfortunately for you, no god will lend you their power. Azar! <laughs> He has gone completely insane. Take him to the Matra and exile him to Aru village. Then find someone to take these two to the confinement room. I'll deal with them later. Grand Sage, we've finished all required preparations for Nyagarbaha Day. We may begin to enter the capsules now. Excellent. You may begin. There's a confinement cell. Ah! Chicken fly through. That's enough. I don't think the guards can hear us anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Paimon got a bit carried away there. How was Paimon acting just now? Great, huh? Imagine no, she could act. Not bad, but worse than mine. <laughs> Everything's going according to plan so far. We made it into confinement, and all hate probably done with his part too! And uh, that was close. We can relax for the time being. We even managed to trick Grand Sage Azar! Oh, Hatham sure knows how to cook up a plan! What are we doing next? Paimon has trouble remembering things when she's worked up. Let's review what we discussed during our strategy meeting. Do we need right, flashbacks right. all the time? Paimon thinks it went something like this. Apart from that, we still have yet another goal in the first stage of our operation, which is to send the Traveler to the confinement room. What? Why do we want to get him locked up on purpose? He's always been the person the Sages are most afraid of, as well as the greatest obstacle to their successful implementation of their plan. They are very aware of the risk he poses to them. Once the Traveler is imprisoned, the Sages will likely think that everything is under control. And with their guard down, the next phase of our plan will have a much higher chance of success. <laughs> I can already see the pompous looks on their faces. Oh, that's a super tricky plan. But Paimon still thinks it's not really worth it. That isn't the only reason, of course. 
he has a more important task once he's in confinement. According to the academia scholars in Rahman's custody, Lesser Lord Kusanali has sealed off her consciousness in the Akasha ever since she was captured by the doctor. That way, they can't pry any more information from her. Even if we break into the sanctuary of Suristhana, it will take time to awaken Lesser Lord Kusanali's consciousness. We need to do that in advance. So our job is to wake up Nahida! Okay, totally worth getting thrown in jail for! Well, how? The confinement room is inside the academia, close to the sanctuary of Suristhana. It's a completely enclosed space, and you won't be receiving any visitors. I'll work with Rahman scholars to make some modifications to your Akasha terminal. Once you're in, get as close as you can to Lesser Lord Kusanali and try to connect to her consciousness. However, as for whether she'll actually wake up, that will depend on our luck. terminal today. It's the one that I'll hate the modified. Parma thought they'd take our Akasha terminals when they locked us up in here. Hmm, were they being careless? Yeah, why? It wasn't because of carelessness, but of their arrogance. They think that Akasha is completely under their control. Alright, so what now? We first need to find a place with the best signal in this room. Then try to reconnect to connect with Nahida. Sounds easy enough. We can finally talk with Nahida after all this time. Let's do it. There's a light flashing on your Akasha terminal. It's almost oh. like oh, the faster it blinks, the better the signal. They didn't take our surge. Sure. All right. No. It's Mora! Ooh, Mora! Oh. Uh, no, Paimon, we're not here to hunt for treasure! I can open the map here. Huh? Is this the right spot? Are you getting anything? It's faint, but I have signal. Preparing to connect her for cautious now. <sighs> Please work. This realm of consciousness. Uh, nothing that's not moving. She really has sealed off her consciousness. I need to think of a way to wake her up. What is this? It looks like some sort of barrier. Is Nahida using this barrier to isolate her consciousness from the outside world? Nahida! Hey, Nahida! Dang, she isn't reacting. It's like she can't sense me. When did it first start? Oh. <coughs> It started from the moment I was born. Oh, this one I have to click. I want to become a worthy Archon. So I've kept studying. Kept listening to my people and their hearts. Kept looking for a way to save Ermin's soul. So I can catch up. Catch up to Greater Lord Rukutavata. 
but I'm stuck in the sanctuary of Sarastana. The sages are creating a god to replace me. And I'm forced to lock my consciousness in this boundless darkness. Nikita! Oh no, is there really nothing I can do? But she's right here in front of me. I can't just give up like this. I had already left her behind once when the doctor first appeared. I can't do that again. Nikita! Now that I think of it, I don't think I've ever actually listened to my own inner voice. Clicking, come on. Do Archons have them? Should Archons have them? Have I been doing the right thing? Am I really not needed? How do I really feel about all of this? It's so quiet here. Since you're the god of wisdom, you've known the answers to all these questions since the very beginning, haven't you? Who are you? Whose voice is that? It sounds familiar. You're right, though. I won't... I won't ignore my own voice anymore. Nahida! Nikita? Did you wake me up? <sighs> Thank you. Why are you here? We're here to rescue you. Are you alright? I'm fine. It's just... When I think of everything that's happened to me, I feel really angry now. You should have been angry ages ago. Huh? Oh, you're back! How's everything? It is awake. That's wonderful news! Great! We weren't locked up for nothing! But how do we... When you went to wake up Nahida, Paimon was listening for any sounds outside. You were out for a long time. There are fewer and fewer scholars going about now. You think everyone's done with their Nya Garba day stuff? Does they finish entering all the knowledge capsules? Yep! So that means our next act is... Milo's performance! Hmm. It takes too long for the special aims. I don't think we're gonna fight the Paladur already. Are we? Nilu, are you sure about this? You're taking such a great risk for them. I'm sure, and I'm going. You know that I don't like to pass up any opportunity to dance, and this one is especially important. <sighs> All right. You seem to have a lot of trust in them, so... I won't say more on the subject, but if anything happens, the few of us here may not be able to help you. Don't worry, they've been through worse. Everything's going to be fine. 
All right. You know, if you really do get arrested, we'll do everything we can to get you back. Be careful, even if it's only for our sakes. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Zubair. You're so very kind. Oh. Always remember that your safety comes first. And don't forget that you're the star of Zubair Theater! It doesn't fit her. Oh, there are people here. Nilu, how's it going? Nervous? Definitely more than usual. But it's because I'm worried I won't dance well enough. It's okay. Just focus on your performance. We'll take care of everything else. <laughs> you sure know how to talk. Taking all the credit, even though we came here together to help out. Well, thank you both. I'll have to treat you to a meal after all this ends. I really, really appreciate all of your help. Ooh, that sounds great. Huh. How can we say no to that? All right, let's get back to business. Nilu, we'll be here to keep people from going to the Academia so they don't interrupt your performance. I was planning on telling them something like, the Academia's been conducting a weird experiment and some of their test subjects escaped. It's really dangerous there, so stay away. Oh, you couldn't think of anything better? Oh, oh well, I guess it does sound like something the Academia would do. <laughs> I think it sounds great. I'm counting on you guys. Don't worry. It'll be a piece of cake. You really like to play cool in front of Nilu. Hey, cut it out. This isn't the time to chat about stuff like that. Oh. Hey, Nilu! Sorry, it's great to see you, but I'm really busy right now. Our bait people away with Yalda Candy's plan is working beautifully. Do you want some candy? We have more than we can give out. Vihar, thank you so much for doing all of this. And even dressed up as the Knight of Flowers, no less. I'll pass on the candy, though. I cut back on sweets in the period leading up to a performance, and I'm about to start one. <laughs> you have a point. The stage is cleared and everything's ready, so you can start your performance at any time. Yeah, thanks to you. I'm really grateful. All right, time to hit the stage. You're welcome. The honor's all mine, since I'll have such a great view of the show. seen a performance like this this is incredible yeah but I heard that public performances like these have been banned I can't believe she's doing this here <laughs> 
Grand Sage. There's some commotion outside. <laughs> How uninteresting. Issue the new Prohibition Act from the Akasha to the guards. They'll know what to do. Uh, do you think we should, like, stop her? Let's just watch for a little bit longer. Not an effect truly in the dark. Did you hear that? It sounds like a lot of guards just ran by. Does this mean the plan has moved on to the next stage? It sounds like. It sounds like Nilo completed her task. Yep, yep. It's great that everything seems to be going well. Come to think of it, when did all Haytham replace the knowledge capsule that was about to be entered into the Akasha? When he pretended that he had been corrupted. Remember, he rushed towards the Rensage. Uh -huh. Paimon was too nervous to notice. Speaking of, didn't all Haytham also yoink the divine knowledge capsule from that mercenary leader in Port Ormos when everyone else was distracted? Oh, it's a time-tested trick of his. Uh, he can't maintain his composure when he thinks they're chaotic. That's why he can pull off this kind of thing. <sighs> complimenting him. Yeah, he's smart and all, but he still makes Paimon's blood boil. <sighs> Let's review our plan for this stage again. It's not like we have anything else to do right now anyway, and it'll help us feel more confident. Paimon remembers that Nilo's task was supposed to go a bit like this. Now that Lesser Lord Kusanali's consciousness has been forcefully sealed, the core figures of the Academia and their guards have started to wear their Akasha terminals again. With the Doctor's technological support, they think they have nothing to fear. How despicable of them to rely on such a person. But this is also our chance. I was originally asked to draft the Knowledge Capsule for the Artistic Performances Prohibition Act when I was still at the Academia. It should be on the Grand Sage's desk right now, and will be entered into the Akasha during the next Nyagarbaha day. Are they really going to stop all artistic performances? That's horrible! I'll make an identical knowledge capsule, but this time, I'll smuggle some misleading information into it. We only need to find an opportunity to switch the capsules. Once it's been entered into the Akasha on Nyagarbaha day, if someone were to be seen performing in public. The sages would definitely use that opportunity to announce the ban, and so the misleading information will be disseminated amongst the guards. Sure sounds complicated, but it seems like if everything goes well, we'll be able to get rid of all the guards in the academia without any effort. That's pretty clever, getting right into their heads. I just have one question. Even if we manage to get the misleading info out to the guards, how can we be sure that they'll believe it? People who are used to relying on the Akasha become less inquisitive, and their ability to distinguish truth from misinformation is significantly reduced. They will view everything the Akasha releases to them as the unequivocal truth. The Akasha will turn humans into machines. I've seen it happen many times. I feel like they're trying to say something here. Yikes. Good thing I didn't wear it for long when I was working in Sumeru City. At first, I thought it was a good thing, too. By the way, this plan still requires a performer, right? Do you have someone in mind? Nilu of Zubair Theater. 
I know her really well. We can trust her. I'm kind of hesitant to ask her to participate in a dangerous plan like this, but we can ask her in person. All right. After the guards and the academia are gone. Then it'll be time for me and my stowaway brothers to shine. Where are they being held? Uh, should I have control of Hayton then to get inside the academia? Since I'm probably controlling. Here they come! Now. Did you see that, Raman? They came out from the academia in droves. After laying low in the city for so long, this is the moment we've been waiting for. My brothers have already sprung into action. <laughs> we couldn't do anything to them inside their coop, but outside the academia, this is our hunting ground. For a lioness like you, the prey sure won't be able to run far. <laughs> we still need to eliminate the guards as soon as possible. If we give the sages enough time to realize what's happening, the plan's doomed. Yeah, all they've done is to sit on their cushy salaries and twiddle their thumbs all day while we fought and struggled every day in the desert. The only advantage they might have is their numbers. Speaking of which, most of the guards who report directly to the Six Sages belong to the Corps of Thirty, but they have a completely different reputation. Following those blasted sages every whim, throwing away all the principles of being a mercenary, as someone in the same profession, I'm obligated to teach him a good lesson today. Indeed, the trap has been set. All we need to do is lead them there. All right, let's each take a road and herd those scattered guards back into one place. Make sure to attract their attention. Isak will be the key. You gave such an important task to that child. Will he be okay? It'll be fine. Isak was so determined to help, so let's put our faith in him. Besides, even if he's caught, the guards would be too scared to do anything to him. They've never seen Lesser Lord Kusanali in person, after all. You've got a point. Oh. Anyway, I think I see them coming. Let's head out. Good luck. Uh, so I'm not gonna control mm. <laughs> this outfit. Uh. Hey, do you remember what you need to do, Isak? When the guards get here, you'll pretend to be Lesser Lord Kusanali and run away from them. Oh, yeah, I remember. Of course, I do. I'm just a, a little nervous. Relax. Don't think about getting caught. Even if that happens, we won't leave you behind. You only need to think about getting the guards' attention and leading them to the Grand Bazaar. Leave the rest to us. Okay, got it. I'm here to pay back Lesser Lord Kusanali for helping Grandpa. I won't get cold feet. Hey, they're here. I can see the Academia Guard. All right, it's time, Isak. Take a deep breath and go. You can do this. It's a bit weird. Why is there a guard over there? Did he already run ahead of me? Mm, this is different from our plan. But there's no time. I need to make a choice. Behind the house. Find the field. Let's find the field because it feels like that's the wrong thing. Huh? Did I just see something dart by? Oh, I thought I would get caught. I'd better go have a look. Were my eyes playing tricks on me? I should go check to see if someone's hiding over there. Stealthy move to the right. What if I do not see? Hey, stop! I saw you! Don't try to run! Don't point a, 
by a pump to a child. As I was caught by the guard, mission failed. I should go check to see if someone's... There seems to be nothing here. Uh, just to be safe, I should look around. Mm, good thing they didn't find me. I was close. I'd better hurry and keep going. Hey! Lesser Lord Kusanali is over there! Stop! What? Lesser Lord Kusanali? How did I not see anything just now? Oh no, they found me. Where should I go? Where's the center? Show it a rest. Huh? Hey! Lesser Lord Kusanali is over there! Stop! That's a what? Get her more Lesser bucks. Lord Kusanali? Oh no, Let's just... they found me. Where should I go? The target suspected to be Lesser Lord Kusanali has escaped into the Grand Bazaar. Assemble and arrest her! I don't think you should be screaming that on the streets. Why people wouldn't people try to stop you? Where did she go? How did she disappear? Did we lose her? Hurry up and find her! Hey, why is your team here? Didn't we say to split up our search? Hurry, hurry! <sighs> this place is... Why are you all here? Yeah, how did boy get all their attention across the city? Yeah, okay. isn't it one heck of a coincidence? Everybody's here. What on earth is going on? I suppose that's all of you? Who are you? Did you set us up? What are you planning? <sighs> Phew, that was rough. I almost got caught. Little brat! So you're not actually Lesser Lord Kusanali. Who exactly are you all? Eremites from the desert? Just some colleagues. Think of this as a business competition, or a personal grudge. After stepping into our traps, stop thinking of yourselves as hunters. Behave like the prey you are. An ambush? How's that possible? This is Sumeru City, but mercenaries from the desert somehow ambushed us! You've spent all your time hiding away in the Academia. This place has long since become our hunting ground. Brace yourselves! Oh. Hmm. This is odd. The Academia has quieted down after the conclusion of the Neogarbaha Day ceremonies, but it's much quieter than usual. Where are the guards? Why have I not seen a single one? Guards? Guards! <laughs> Grand Sage, how may I be of assistance? I called for the guards. Why did you come? Uh, my, my apologies, Grand Sage. Right now, all Academia guards have entered the city to perform the ordered arrest. I thought you knew. Arrest? Who is there to arrest? I have an ominous feeling. Uh, arrest Lesser Lord Kusanali, right? Is that not what the order was? Lesser Lord Kusanali? You mean she has disappeared? Uh, yes, I wouldn't dare make up something like that. Right now, everyone is in a panic, and many are saying that... that Lesser Lord Kusanali will take revenge on us. What happened? Just what is going on? Lesser Lord Kusanali somehow escaped? Was it Alhatham and his party that freed her? That's impossible. 
The Academia is heavily guarded today, and any order to release Lesser Lord Kusanali would be strictly confidential. Besides, Alhatham and the Traveler are already in our hands. What manner of trickery did they employ? How could Lesser Lord Kusanali disappear into thin air? Disappear? Wait. How was the arrest order distributed to the guards? It was issued by the Akasha earlier today. Only you have the authority to send messages like that, so I thought it was your order. Let me check. Ah, here. Lesser Lord Kusanali has escaped from the Sanctuary of Surasthana. Go to the city and arrest the escapee immediately. That's not what it's written, but okay. The Akasha indeed contains this information, and it clearly appeared in my mind. How did they bypass my permissions to issue this kind of message? Was it the report about the Traveler that Alhatham submitted? No. I specifically checked that knowledge capsule before entering it into the Akasha. Could that have been... A red herring? Well, even if I figure it out now, it won't make any difference. The important thing now is to confirm Lesser Lord Kusanali's status. Have you been to the Sanctuary of Surasthana to confirm that Lesser Lord Kusanali has indeed escaped? Confirm? N no I, I haven't. It, it may be a bit offensive to say this, but Grand Sage, what you're saying doesn't make any sense. How can the information in the Akasha be inaccurate? What the Akasha decrees is fact. That is common knowledge to all of us. If we have to confirm the information and knowledge from the Akasha ourselves, then how is that any different from us learning that information ourselves? Wouldn't Greater Lord Rukadavata's legacy lose its meaning that way? In the beginning, it was I who asked you to believe in the Akasha, to believe in the legacy left by Greater Lord Rukadavata. Are you trying to use my words against me? N no Grand Sage. I'm merely confused because I believe in you. I never meant to refute you. <laughs> Stay here and see if there are any suspicious people around. I'll go to the Sanctuary of Surasthana on my own. Y yes Grand Sage. Sage. Lesser Lord Kusanali has escaped from the sanctuary of Surasthana. Go to the city and arrest the escapee immediately. <sighs> How can that be? Stop thinking about it. Stop. There must be a trick of theirs. As long as I personally confirm it. Ah! Impossible. That's impossible. There must be something wrong with my eyes. Oh. Hmm? Uh, she really appeared again. What is the meaning of this? Can she go invisible? What a comical sight is are. <gasps> Once the Akasha has put certain thoughts into your head, even the Grand Sage can no longer oh. see what's right in front of him. You all can only see the world in your mind, the one you think you know. And precisely because of this, you disregarded Lesser Lord Kusanali's existence. She has been a wise and worthy Archon. Sino. Have you been waiting for a chance like this? The Akasha predicted that you would return to the Academia to confront me, but I didn't expect it to turn out like this. I was careless. No, you were blinded. Your faults stem from your reliance on the Akasha. You're still the same as always. 
I truly did not expect a proud person like you to cooperate with all Haytham and the Traveler. People change, Azar. Admit it. The Akasha can't predict my actions anymore. <laughs> then tell me, what have you found during your investigation? You want to buy time? This is the Sanctuary of Suristhana. Under your own regulations, even Academia staff are forbidden to come here. No one will come to save you. As for the investigation, I've at least confirmed that you are guilty of insurgency against the Archon. A serious crime. So what? Did you do all of this so I would plead guilty in front of you, General Mahamatra? Hey, just kill him or something. No. I want you to plead guilty in front of the Archon herself. You once said that I had no standing to judge you. So now, how about judgment in the name of a god? Yeah, we're not doing much, but it's nice that they aren't so reliable in all the Traveler this time. Should make things succeed. Oh, Paimon hasn't heard any sounds outside for a while. Hopefully something bad didn't happen. I don't think like that. We must trust our friends. Yeah, but aren't you scared that we might be locked up in here for the rest of our lives? <sighs> Thinking about it, at least Paimon has you. We could still chat like this. Oh, that's the worst. When Paimon thinks of Nahida being imprisoned alone in the sanctuary of Suristhana, Paimon can't help but feel sorry for her. Here comes your savior. Uh, you were scared out of your wits just a moment. You two really owe me some big thanks. I had to search through who knows how many guards to find the key here. It felt even more tiring than whacking them. I'm exhausted. Thanks a lot. Need Paimon to rub your shoulders? <laughs> uh, n no, n no, that's, uh, I I'll pass. Oh, are you ticklish? Ugh, now isn't the time to talk about being ticklish. Uh, how are things in the house in the Things in the city and on Sino's side are both going well. The guards that stormed out of the Academia are all taken care of. The Corps of Thirty is in charge of the city's defenses, but we already talked to Asfand. They've been fed up with the sages bossing them around. Hmm. As long as it doesn't break their employment contracts, they'll turn a blind eye. <laughs> what That's bad probably break. because you've been super great friends with them for a long time. So, how's Sino doing? The Grand Sage is in his custody. Even I know how terrible it is to fall into Sino's hands, so he probably does too. Sino forced him to release Lesser Lord Kusanali. He has no choice but to obey. So, hurry to the Sanctuary of Suristhana. Assuming nothing weird happened, we should have already rescued our Archon. Uh, that's... that also sounds amazing. I mean, rescue. Honestly, I didn't expect our ragtag bunch to do this well. We just came together last minute to save the Archon, you know? Yeah, it went too smoothly. Alright, you two better go. I still have to clean up some messes in the city. See you around.
I'm free again. So go anywhere. Time to go. It's nice to meet you. This is the first time we've met in real life. Before, we've only met in dreams, consciousness, or when I was in someone else's body. We finally meet, Nahida. Thank you so much for coming to rescue me, but I also need to apologize. During this time, I did some self-reflection. My sense of inferiority and yielding to the academia led to all of this. And created so much trouble for you all. You deserve to be free. Don't worry about it, you've also helped us a lot. Exactly! We're here because you're a good Archon and one of our friends! <laughs> Thanks, you two. <sighs> Amazing. So this is how it feels to walk out of that cage with my own body. It's like I just had an endlessly long dream. I can't even tell if I just woke up or was only now born into this world. My concept of self has become so clear. <clears throat> but now doesn't seem to be the time to indulge in this feeling. Academia's God creation plan. Uh, certainly so, uh... so... Um... This is really embarrassing. You all just rescued an Archon, and now she needs your help to save her country, and even the entire world. It's okay. With you here, Paimon's sure that everything will work out. There's one more thing. What is it? For all the things the Academia did to me, and for all the folly it committed in the name of wisdom, as their Archon, I will make them pay. Ah! Wow! That's the spirit! You're finally standing up for yourself and not letting people walk all over you! <laughs> I understand now. To be a better Archon, I first need to better myself. If you haven't even figured out how to be a caterpillar, how can you be a butterfly? Mm. This is knowledge that only you yourself could have discovered. Yes, true. Hmm, that reminds me. I wonder how far along the Academia is with their god creation plan. We need to hurry and prevent the birth of that false god. I need to make some preparations. Since I'm now free, I can establish a direct link to the Akasha and control it. First things first. I need to remove the restrictions that the doctor put on me in the Akasha. After that, I'll make some adjustments and revoke the sage's permissions. The Akasha will then be like how it originally was, only operable by the Archon. After all, the Academia betrayed Greater Lord Rukadavata's trust. This might take some time. In the meantime, you should also work on your own preparations. If we don't stop the God Creation plan in time, we'll be in for a tough fight. Okay, should we go there now? And deal with the Akasha later. I don't know if this quest is almost ending or if I'm halfway through.
might as well prepare for a fight. When we're done, we can take a walk around. After all, we missed out on a lot of stuff when we were locked up. Okay. I hope it's just... Oh. It's right now. parts that needed my involvement to complete. Although it's my first time working with the Akasha like this, its internal structure and operation procedures are easy for me to understand. Greater Lord Rukadavata's design is truly brilliant. Oh, also, this is for you. Oh, I got a pet. Huh? What's this little floaty thingy? It's a small device I put together just now. You can think of it as an upgraded Akasha terminal. So I put that in my ear? You may not need it right now, but it should be helpful in certain situations. Wait! This thing has the same characteristics as Paimon! So it can replace you. We're both small things that float! No, this was oh, quite... It's even better. I'm actually upset. It looks so big different from you. <laughs> it's alright, Paimon. It can't replace you. It's only a flying device, but you're the traveler's irreplaceable friend. <sighs> you're so good at comforting people, Nahida. If only the traveler was as smart as you. Hmm. Hmm? I was simply telling you what I feel to be the truth. I wasn't trying to comfort you. Nahida, you're natural at this. What you just said made Paimon even happier. By the way, there's something I need to confess. Even though I'm the Archon and in control of myself again, I'm not very good at fighting. You may have heard that an Archon's power is derived from their people's faith. However... I'm not as well loved as Greater Lord Rukadavata. Hmm. The fact that they were. they have faith, but they were against the Shogun didn't diminish her power. The fact that they still believe in. but I think. Rex Lapis is dead doesn't diminish. If we get Shogun's into a situation power. where combat is our only option. I'll have to count on you, and I'll do my best to provide support. Mm, fine, my forte. I'm glad I can rely on you. Hmm. So the God of Wisdom isn't good at fighting? That actually sounds about right. I've located where the false God is. Time is of the essence, so let's skip to it. Foundry. The god, yes, we are using human wisdom to create a god. Okay, occasionally I can probably beat him. <coughs> Unless I can attack through my shield like the. What is this place? Really, the way we need to go? Wow. Who would have thought there'd be a place like this hidden right slap bang in the middle of the city? Yeah, it looks like things from a fountain. Like the that. sages wanted to realize their god creation plan without being discovered. The safest and most convenient way would be to build within the academia itself. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's true. They were already hiding one god, so why not two? 
Judging from the structure here, the project is a huge undertaking. The sages really saw the god creation plan as their ultimate goal. But this place doesn't look like it could have been constructed by the Academia alone. The Fatui under the Doctor sure didn't hold back. They provided a lot of technological support. And still have one of their own harbingers become a god after all. Yeah, why did he kind of compete with the Tsaritsa? Yeah! Or else they wouldn't have been that generous. Is that it though? I've always felt that this doctor is different from the Academia Sages. He doesn't seem to share their sense of urgency. Instead of being interested in the end product, it's like he's enjoying the experimental process. Hmm. The Fatui Harbingers are all such weirdos. So, the doctor being weird is actually normal. So, this Fatui that they're trying to turn into a god is called the Balladeer? We had previously come into contact with his consciousness. He harbors particularly strong obsessions. One is the desire for a gnosis, since he was created to be the vessel for one. The other obsession is probably related to his past. I can't quite explain it. Hmm, but even the rich shoguns... Bopes didn't have a gnosis. It was Yaimiko that was keeping for her. Paimon knows that he was a prototype puppet for the Raiden Shogun before he became a Fatui Harbinger. That's why he wants a Gnosis so badly. There's no way he'd willingly be a test subject. Now with that temper and ego of his. It sounds like you know the Balladeer quite well. We've had a few encounters, but none of them were pleasant. I see. Tell me more about him and what he's like. Oh, come on, let's just go fight The more it. we know now, the better we can plan for and react to any future situation. No, shoot and hit as much as you can. Then I hear everything you know about the Baladir. Ah, I see. How fascinating. Alright, time to go. Let's get through here and meet him in person. Checking. Oh, okay. We strike, let's begin. No slacking off. Stay wind strike. In round. Not breaking a sweat in my work. I hear everything! Positions! Send this quickly! I will have order! Stabilize! Can't see! I can't see! I guess... this is it! The pattern on the ground seems all messed up. Let's go around and see if there's a way to fix it. No, it could rotate while I was walking. Huh? 
Time to go. Fallen leaves. Adorn my... One with the forest. The wind strike. Oh. Okay. I defeat him. Uh... Did I? Yeah. No. I didn't. Gather! With all my strength! Keep up! I guess this is it. Um, but I just put the one of pain. You'll get frostbite. Solidify. Clouds high. The birds call. Here. Freshness preserved. Chill to the bone. Let's nip that in the butt. Cooked food. To save Wind strider. This dance is for you. Can't run from dead. Follow the wind. Okay, all right. Mm. I think I can glide over there. Gather. Ah, uh, this is just make it go around. Okay, but that's where I need to go. Stabilize! Okay, let's take that. Oh, actually... There may be something here. No. That could be. Hey! I 
can't even walk there. Yeah. Time to go. Wind Strider. Without my strings. Let's end this quickly. In shroud. This isn't good. That seemed to work. I'll put you on the line. Order guide you. Gather. One with the forest. We can't run. I hear everything. Cook this through. Miscalculated. Fallen leaves. Adorn my knight. Solidify. Wind Strider. Can't see. Let's nip that in the butt. I will have order. Wind Strider. Now the boss fight. Hmm, I thought it would go down. status, we must prepare for the worst. The god they wanted to create is likely close to completion or already completed. That's no surprise. I've already seen him control the water. Oh no. What should we do? Paimon can't imagine how hard it would be to fight against a Fatui Harbinger with a Gnosis. Are you nervous, Paimon? If you really want to know, of course Paimon's nervous. Aren't you too, Nahida? Yes, I am. This is probably the first time I faced with a calamity of this degree since my birth. I feel not just nervous, but curious as well. Curious? Curious about what? Curious about our fate. To me, everything we perceive in this world, everything we learn, and everything that happens to us is considered knowledge. And if it's a form of knowledge, then it can be understood. However, only fate is about that which has yet to occur, so it has always drawn my curiosity. So to me, fate is the ultimate knowledge. That's also why I love observing humans and all the things that happen to them. It all brings me great satisfaction. And now, at long last, I'm not just an observer anymore. I will personally experience my own fate with you by my side. <laughs> Isn't this such a wonderfully exciting thing? Ah, so that's what you mean. Paimon thinks she understands what you're feeling. I'm also looking forward to it. Agreed. Okay, let's continue on. I can sense his aura from here. I guess fighting him and any star that should be afterwards, maybe half an hour or more.
would have thought the world would be so eager for my birth? I remember you, Boer, the god of wisdom, and standing beside you, the Traveler. Is heal knowing and powerful now like Greater Lord Ruka Devada? No, I can't feel the same kind of divinity I felt from the Greater Lord. It seems that the sages didn't get the chance to infuse the divine knowledge capsules into him. But even still, he has undoubtedly become a true god now. <sighs> so we're too late? The Balladeer has already... already become a god? The Balladeer. A long bygone title. When my spirit ascended to divinity, I felt as if I had existed for the same number of epochs as heaven and earth. Looking back, the existence of what once called itself Kuni Kazushi appears infinitely small and ugly. There's not it's enough time to read all that. Us. It really feels like the gods! A body that capitalizes on the Balladeer's original construction as a mechanical puppet, with the Gnosis serving as a constant power supply. How much effort and resources did the Sages put into this? From a purely technological perspective, it's a commendable achievement indeed. It's no exaggeration to say, this is the culmination of human wisdom. You sure are something! Dishing out compliments at a time like this? But I don't think he's reached the spiritual height of a god. So he's still the same, old balladeer on the east side. Not sure that's good or bad thing. Strife is engraved upon every god and every gnosis brought forth into this world. And how are they brought forth into this world? Can you feel it? The exhilaration of such power and the thrill of anticipation for our contention. Nahida wouldn't feel the same things as you! Do you not realize that you are interrupting a conversation between gods? Lowly creature, know your place! Still the same blood you we know. The strife engraved upon a Gnosis. You're talking about the Archon War. Mm. Tavat's current peace was not easily won. I didn't personally participate in the Archon War, but the way I see it, all those losses were meaningless, driven by the demands of the laws. There's no point in bringing it up again. <laughs> Is that so? Yet I am deeply disappointed that I was never allowed the fortuity to personally participate in the Archon War. This is a first. Encountering a god in this world who does not crave power. Well, we've only met one. Well, no, we probably met the Zeritz. Yeah, but the, from the three we met before, two didn't. No wonder your own people have abandoned you. God of Wisdom. But from now on, Nahida's followers will only continue to increase in number. <laughs> your judgment is as your existence. Unsubstantial. This is where everything ends, Boor. The God of Wisdom. Where did she come up with this name? Nobody called her that yet. You should know that Wisdom cannot solve every problem. Like now, where your only option is to face me in combat. Come! Let us reenact a scene of the Archon War. Come and inaugurate my birth as a god. Stabilize! Oh, what? what do you Feeble human! Oh, okay. One with the force! Very... Insignificant past! Gather! 
Like he just keep him like that. I was a foundation. How do I release that? I need to use At my the command, you shall As fall. one with wind and cloud. Wind strike. Oh. Stabilize. Insignificant past. Oh, I guess Oh. I'll approve This is order. Solidify! Insignificant past! Here! Feeble human! Okay, I, I probably would be dying here. I don't really get what's the point of gold. Yeah. I mean, okay, this one looks sweet. But... At my command, or the other you elements shall actually fall. hurting me. Scatter.
This is supposed to be a battle between gods, yet you choose to hide behind a mortal. And now, you're acting like you'd sacrifice yourself for a human. Are you having fun proving a false sense of heroism to yourself, Boor? <laughs> is almost complete. Do you even know how many times you've tried to take my Gnosis from me? <clears throat> we just concluded the 168th loop. Did you know that in the effort to create you, the people of Sumeru were forced to live through the exact same number of Subzerus festivals and Samsara cycles? The power of dreams. When did you use it on me? <laughs> you can't even defeat me in a dream. What do you hope to achieve with this little trick? Huh? Come, Traveler. Just like before. Allow me to awaken the memories in your dreams. <gasps> oh, but welcome back to the angels. It's more than that. Compile everyone's wisdom in the name of the Archon. That is the original function of the Akasha. I've sent everything that happened just now to the people of Sumeru in the form of knowledge. I've asked them to help you find a way to defeat the false god. Save you. Oh, would that be the anchors? True. The fight of the words. Done with your tricks? Can I finally take this as a real battle between gods? I'll leave this to you, the first sage of Boor. Where did this num name come from? I oh. am the all knowing God. Okay, and then third. Wow, it's really looking like. Uh, yeah. Solidify! Oh, Burn it's... to oblivion! Can I break one up? Wind strike! Kneel! Cap! Cap! Oh. What? Oh, I didn't notice. Stabilize. Reality is pain. Solidify! Order guide you! Good riddance! Oh. Cruel world! Time to go! 
Return! As one with wind and cloud! Let's nip that in the butt! That's mine! Don't even try! I'll never! I'll never go back! haven't yet found the answer to the most important mystery. Ermensoul is still waiting to be saved. With the power of another Gnosis, we may now finally understand the last memory of Greater Lord Rukadavata. Huh? This is... That's right. This is the last memory of my predecessor. Oh. I'm not a potential. Huh. This sure seems very different from what Paimon imagined. Shouldn't Ermensoul be in this realm of consciousness? Yes, that is our destination. But I didn't expect the remaining consciousness of Greater Lord Rukadavata to be as polluted as this. Sure not. Must be due to forbidden knowledge. Forbidden knowledge? It seems you know about a concept that even I don't completely understand. Could you tell me what you know? Gonna hit about all the learning deserts. Hmm, your inference seems logical enough. Forbidden knowledge once polluted the desert thousands of years ago, but was successfully repelled thanks to King Deshrit's self-sacrifice and Greater Lord Rukadavata nearly exhausting her power. Then, a second instance of forbidden knowledge pollution occurred during the Conria Cataclysm 500 years ago. 
But I'm afraid it is much more serious this time, with Ermin's soul itself already in danger. So, if we're in the remaining consciousness of Greater Lord Ruka Devata, and it's also been affected by forbidden knowledge pollution, then does that mean, in order to save us, Greater Lord Ruka Devata? Yes. It's very possible that she sacrificed her life in the fight against forbidden knowledge. She didn't completely eradicate forbidden knowledge, but if it weren't for her actions, the pollution would have been far more rampant over these past 500 years. The way that everyone, including me, has forgotten everything about forbidden knowledge may very well be due to her restoration of Ermin's soul. <laughs> Do you feel sad, Nahida? I'm just... Uh, sharing her pain. The pollution of her consciousness here is severe. There is madness, chaos, and pain all around us. Did she fight to resist the forbidden knowledge pollution in such terrible conditions? All the way up to her last breath? She even used her last remnant of lucid consciousness to leave a clue for us to follow. A clue, you mean the words? Word, forget me. Yes. Her words were distorted by forbidden knowledge, so that's all we could hear. But now, we have a chance to find the answer to this mystery. We can cross the polluted consciousness until we found the right path to meet with her lucid consciousness. And then, we'll let Greater Lord Ruka Devata tell us the truth in person. I hope can use that trust to set her body. Each of us need to be mindful of the state of our own consciousness while we are here. Even with the Gnosis' protection, we must always keep a clear mind. Otherwise, we could go mad at any moment. <sighs> That's so scary! Don't worry, it should be easy enough for you to keep that mind of yours clear, Paimon. Let's go! We, can we leave? Can we can leave? I don't I have no idea how long this would take. I don't know if there's a whole quest ahead of us to kill the enemy so if just a few steps and we're done. Uh, I'm gonna step here. There may be like 10 minutes ahead, but there may be an extra hour or so. So, yeah. Huh? I'm gonna step here and maybe continue tomorrow. Huh?